So our second Crosby, Stills, and Nash song both seem to drop the long hair thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And don't. And like, don't. Don't cut your hair because yeah. it's almost cut my hair. Cut I, hair. I didn't cut my hair. Yeah. I'm going to let it keep it. But you if you better cut your hair, if you're going to try and get elected, you're going to have to cut your hair. It's like a threat. Isn't it interesting that people will find any reason that's different to discriminate, even if it's something as mundane as hair length? Hair length. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if you're a woman and you keep it too short, meh. If you're a man and you keep it too long, meh. <laughs> I like your disapproval sound. Yeah. It's, it's like the sheep when they get upset. It's like the sheep when they get upset. The mad sheep, meh. Yeah, mad sheep, meh. <laughs> you don't fit the flock. So, yeah. I wonder what that is about the um, human psyche that means if you're different, you are bad. I think we, if you're looking for commonality, you have your your natural biases toward people similar to you. somebody that's similar to you. So if you find someone that has a lot of similarities, but they have one thing that's off, it makes you more comfortable if they change to fit into your social structure. Yeah. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not a psychologist over here. Probably ultimately less to sense. do with dislike and more to do with fear. You know, scared of them changing you or... I don't know. Long hair like. seems completely docile to me. Like the least combative thing that there is. <laughs> I just didn't cut it. Yeah. How is that... How does that infringe on anybody else's... Being. Definitely in my younger days, not so much recently, you know, but definitely ran into people when my hair was as long as it is now. Mm -hmm. It was yeah. longer when we first met. Yeah. And, and I mean, it's been various lengths, but I've definitely run into the people that um, have something to say about it mm -hmm. and they can make it known. And Even not, if it's just a little snide thing. Well, I've, I've even had people going as far as like touch it or grab it. Mm -hmm. Like in an aggressive manner. Yeah. yeah. That's weird. <laughs> Trying to like That's strange. Show. Yeah. So it's kind of weird. But anyhow, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, to the point, there's some long-haired freak flying. Freak flag flying. Freak flag yeah. flying. According to themselves, yeah. Children of the 60s and 70s that yeah. really got it done, didn't they? I mean, yeah. like the success of their folk rock movement was probably unparalleled in their genre i would say you know well um, i feel like i've listened to a fair piece of their music crosby stills and nash and crosby stills nash and young and i had never heard this song prior to it being suggested for the shout out and had you had you you heard it, or were yes. you very familiar with it? Well, I mean, I've. <laughs> I, I, I like the Crosby Stills and Nash. I had probably about three or four. But this song in particular is this song in particular. I'm yes, not super I've versed in their song. catalog, though. Is this? I'm not sure if it's on Deja Vu. Is this one of their deeper cuts, or is this uh, was this a radio play sort just, of thing? It wouldn't have been their hit, like you know, like teach your children well. Yeah, I, but if yeah. I'm, for that matter, cut your hair. Almost cut my hair wasn't a hit per se either. It would have been their hit, hits would have been more like, um, you know, teach teach your children well. And um, our house is a very 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 fine house. Yeah, okay. You know, stuff like that. Those were more of the popular radio hits. Two cats in the yard. Yeah. How do you keep the cats in the yard? Um, Fences don't work for yeah, cats. I don't know. They get you're some like, tame maybe cats. Maybe if you're in a neighborhood and you feed them in the other places, don't. <laughs> okay, no. Yeah, this brings things in perspective. Checks out with cats. Yeah. So, yeah, okay. um, but I think... Or maybe the lion statues out at the end, because yeah. that was supposed to be prosperity. Maybe maybe that's maybe what that's it was, because either side... I'm not sure what they meant by that in that song, but, you know... I don't, I always look to them, even though I would grew up much later than the '60s. Uh, you know, grew well, you know, a couple decades later, and I was kind of of the same mindset of like the hippie movement. I guess part of the reason I kept my hair long. We've been told multiple times. 
Well, even to this day, yeah, people dozens say modern of modern times, or, whatever, or, or if you guys were born too too late. I don't know that there ever is like a late time for what maybe the hippies idealized. Yeah, you know? I agree. <laughs> so and the music I had such such a deep had weight, meaning. Yeah, exactly. It had weight to it, and you know, I think I identified with a lot of the stuff like um, that. Crops of Stills and Nash wrote, even though some of their songs were protest the war. You know, I wouldn't say that you can still protest even when there's not a war, <laughs> you know, and yeah. there's other wars going on. Gosh, I mean, there's plenty to protest always been at war, now. So there's yeah. always, you know, a reason to protest. Sure. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Um, and art has, art has brought that to attention. Yeah. I almost think that, um, not to get too political, but I almost feel like art, I mean, um, War is such a serious subject. I mean, you're taking somebody else's life, right? Like, and at times indiscriminately, it seems like. So no matter what the justification, there always should be protest. Whether you agree with the protest or not, even if I don't, if even if I was to agree with the war, a war, then I think there still should be protest because I think it brings things to mind that maybe you don't get without the protest. Well, I think you know? the loss of life on any level, should never be taken lightly. That itself should be protested, right? It shouldn't be taken lightly. Yeah, and that governments back the loss of life. Like, that's the, that's the goal of what they're setting out to do. That's the loss of life. You don't get it back. Yeah. You don't get to reset. You don't... Those people are gone. They're The things that they were here to contribute... In beauty, in family, in love, the the beautiful things that we each are have to contribute to this planet, those are wiped out. Mm -hmm. Those are gone. And even even the loss of life, an effort to save more life, really should be deeply questioned. It's hard to think of anything like, um, you know, those are the active participants, and you know, what you can argue all day long, whether, you know. People are if people are truly evil and which people maybe deserve to be casualties of war, but I don't think you can argue that anybody deserves to be collateral damage. Not at all. Like you know, even I I think even even in and this might be hot button for some people. Even in the when you look at capital punishment, when someone is convicted of a crime or has admitted to a crime that has resulted in them receiving the death penalty. In administering that punishment, the innocent people become the murderers of that person. Yeah. And I know it's a, a it's administration of justice should not heap Burden. Burden. I, 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 I want to say like sin. That weight on the person that's administering the justice. Because the weight should be on the person who's paying for their crime. Well, and we know better, right? Because we've designed ways to execute people in a fashion that not a like a it has the person. appearance of being or more a single person doesn't I mean, oh, necessarily have to take the weight like, like the, the firing, firing squad, squad where yeah. one person has a yeah. bullet or two people have bullets or whatever you know and they've come up with different ways of so that to kind of mitigating that yeah because they they recognize that the ex execution of taking a human life comes with a soul sacrifice a burden so of speak. guilt yeah. yeah a burden of guilt so. as it should I think that's the point it should come with wow we got we got deep on got this deep fast yeah but yeah i mean um <laughs> it's it's worthy to protest i think that it's important that we've had bands that protest whether you agree with them or not music you know and i think that you know a lot of today's culture it's sad to me that one side can't stand the other side and don't want to hear the arguments you know mm -hmm. it's like how do you know what you're doing is right and just if you never listen to the other side and or you arguments. never question your side, and you never question your side. But, you know, like, I think that's why things like music and art are so important. And it just breaks my heart that schools have unfunded them, you know, and unfunded things like right. 
like music comprehension and art, you know, um, appreciation, appreciation mm-hmm. because these classes used to took a, take a deeper look into this type of thing. And you can go deep with mm-hmm. things like we just did, you know, just through art and music. And you can. And you don't have to be the creator of it. You don't have to change your yeah. beliefs. Nobody's threatening you through right. art or right. threatening you through just, music. Like, just so people, posing people a question. People feel threatened just because they hear an opinion that's different than them. Right. And I have to wonder, like, why do you feel threatened by a different opinion? Or the question. Or the question. Of your opinion. Because... I feel like if my, the conclusion that I've come to through a hopefully thoughtful process doesn't stand up to scrutiny, then why do I, why am I intent on holding it? Right. If I can't look at it from every angle and answer questions that an opposition of this opinion has that solidifies my belief in the thing that I hold then I should be open to letting it go and changing my mind. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't stand up to scrutiny, why do I want to hold on to something that's wrong and potentially harmful to people? I've always wanted to hear other sides of my opinions because of that very reason. Mm -hmm. You know... Everybody wants to be right. I wasn't born with all the answers. Mm -mm. I wasn't born with, like, a special enlightenment, you know? Mm -hmm. But... Through searching and listening to reason, I feel like I'm a fairly level-headed and reasonable person, and that I can come to, you know, a, a fairly justifiable conclusion mm-hmm. based on information that I'm given. You know, but if there's and are still open-minded, mm-hmm. I want that information too. Exactly. You know, and I'm not just looking for an echo chamber. That's one thing I feel like. Unfortunately, the that's where this dangers of the internet have stepped yeah. in because there's algorithms that want to feed us what we like to participate in. So if I love all things the color blue, then the algorithm is going to show me more things that are the color blue. And if I'm not careful, all that I will see is the color blue. And I won't be able to see any of the myriad of other hues that there are in the yeah. world, right? So I don't wish for an echo chamber. I want to see the whole thing yeah. and then choose what I want to participate in. And I wonder how true that is, like, like, or if it's just centered around certain topics. Because I'll give an example. Like, I can listen. I can go downstairs right now, <clears throat> get on YouTube, mm-hmm. listen to Fish, Grateful Dead, a couple Sunday shoutouts, Almond Brothers, mm-hmm. you know, modern music I like, Revivalist, Ray LaMontagne. I can listen to music all day long, mm-hmm. going through it, mm-hmm. and maybe I come across one video <clears throat> of the situation in the Gaza Strip, you okay. know, and I'll yeah. click on that and I watch it. My algorithm will be nothing but the politics. Rather than the music. Rather than the music. Yeah. So, and I wonder why that is. I why think, is it because I can, you know, if I think it money was only the about answer? the time and the time and the content that I was I think money spending, is the answer. Then yeah. it would be... Yeah. more music would yeah it so it's it's a weighted algorithm the people who are doing the sponsorship the media outlets that do have a dog in the race whereas perhaps someone like Ray LaMontagne he's not sinking tens of thousands of dollars into his YouTube views he's not trying to get more people to but see he thinks algorithm, the that's, people that's that are going to find him are going to find weighted him weighted by money like it's supposedly but it's not, not being advertised yeah. no because it's sponsorships there are sponsorships that come in and come over the top mm-hmm. of your natural algorithmic rhythm. It just seems like, uh, yeah, a little false. Because the the company, YouTube or Facebook or Meta or whatever, whatever social you're choosing to view content on, the company has an investment in making money. And if you're using that platform for free, then you are the product. So you are the thing that's making them money. So the way they're making money is a roundabout way through advertising and sponsorship. So in order for you to be the money maker, they want to keep you on the site. So the things that you are invested in, or perhaps that make you a little mad, that make you want to go down a rabbit hole, they... They can pinpoint, and I, I want to say these algorithms and this artificial intelligence has kind of pegged 
the human psyche. So they they have put their finger on this person likes this, 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 and this. So taking all this information that I've gleaned off the multiple socials that they have out there because none of it's protected, I'm going to say they're going to like these things or this is going to make them mad enough to stay on this site for an extra 10 minutes today, which means I get more money off of them because of the sponsorships. So I think it really, the way the algorithms are set up, they're set up by the company that owns them. The algorithm itself is not malicious. (laughs) You know, and and we're still it's still kind of at the genesis of all this AI stuff where we don't know what unintended consequences are going to come at us. But there, it's going to happen. It's going to come because it's already been and we've already seen consequences of it because words are not fact checked. And like people, if one person says something, everybody else spreads it as the gospel truth. And then it is. Well, and that's history, it isn't truth, it? But then <laughs> so the propaganda becomes true, even whether it happened or not. But now, well, you've heard the old adage, history is written by the winners. Right. We only get part of the story. And now with AI though, it's like, you're going to have these photos and things that look real. Completely. Or videos that look real. Unreal. Are not real. Yeah. I've heard from people just not to, you can't trust what you're seeing unless it's happening right in front of you anymore. That's crazy. Yeah. It's like we live in the virtual reality. It's wild. But it's one thing that is real is a Sunday shout out. Yeah. <laughs> we we are not AI no. generated. And it's funny in a movement that, you know, it's picking up steam because it, I think it's authentic. We, like today, one take. We practice the song a couple times. We record it, one take. If it's not exactly perfect, it's That's okay. Cool. Because yeah. it's us sitting organic. It's us sitting up in our little home studio recording a song that we like. Inviting our and friends doing our over. Own take, inviting our own friends over yeah. for coffee and a chat afterwards. Yeah. You know? And that's it hits home for me. It's fun. Yeah, I like that. That's the kind of more in the algorithm, please. Yes. I'm looking forward to next week. <laughs> Any idea what next week is? You want to give him a hint? I have no idea. Oh, me neither. That's how it is every week. We don't. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know yet. We don't know. It's when the inspiration strikes. It just does. So, tune in next week, I guess. Yeah, I will. <laughs>